us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your sweet glory that is already in this atmosphere. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Oh, we declare that this is the day that we enter into abundant life. Oh, into everlasting life, into your resurrection power. Oh, you are the way, the truth, and the life. We establish the everlasting life of Jesus Christ in this atmosphere and we break agreement with death and all doubt now in the name of Jesus for your word says for the law of the spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death oh you have liberated us from sin and from death so we ask oh king of glory king of life everlasting one come and be seated upon the praises of your people let there be life let there be life in this atmosphere we bind all death now in the name of jesus we bind the spirit of heaviness now in the name of jesus we release an atmosphere of praise an atmosphere of worship oh wound us with your glory wound us with your glory wound us with fresh hunger with desperation oh we declare dry bones hear the word of the lord the lord has caused breath to enter you that you may come to life he has placed sinews upon you made flesh grow back on you covered you with skin and he has placed breath in you so that you may come alive and know that he is the lord he is the lord he is the one true god the only god oh yahweh we declare may your life breathe in this place oh lord we release your resurrection life to breathe upon this atmosphere we declare the breath of god the holy spirit is being released now and is defeating the spirit of slumber complacency and heaviness now in the name of jesus for your word declares when you release your spirit wind life is created ready to replenish all life upon the earth Holy Spirit, breathe wholeness and strength into our innermost being tonight. And this morning, O oh Lord, oh, for your word says you have rescued our souls from death's fear and dried our eyes of many tears. He has kept our feet firmly on the path and strengthened us so that we may please him and live our lives before him in his life-giving power. Lord, we bow before your divine presence and bring you our deepest worship as we experience your tender love and your living truth for the promise of your word and the fame of your name have been magnified above all else. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, say, God, your name be magnified in this house this morning. Lord God, let no other name get, a, get, a, get our attention. Lord God, accept your name. Lord God, today we lift your name high because it is your name that is worthy to be lifted high because you are great and greatly to be praised. Lord God, I'm reminded of the scripture that says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord God, today we run. Lord God, you, your word says that you are our strong tower. And so today we run into the strong tower today. Lord God, we do not look to man. Lord God, we do not look to any possession. We do not look to the finances of this world. But Lord, we say, let us focus our eyes. Lord God, under your presence. Lord, today, do what only you can do. Lord God, we know that there are things, Lord God, that are ready to be released into the natural. Lord God, they are on the cusp of heaven. And so we say, let our prayers, let our worship, let our cry, Lord God, release those things from heaven into the he the earthly realm. Lord God, let there be another open heaven be released into this house. Lord God, we thank you because we know that today is the day for the prodigals to come home. We know that today is the day for sickness to melt away. We know that today is the day for bondage, Lord God, and chains to be broken off. Lord God, just like Paul and Silas into the prison. Lord God, in that midnight hour, Lord God, it was from the praises of their mouth. It was from the sound that they released that those chains began to break off. And so I say that today be a day that chains are broken. Lord God, those chains that we have walked around with for years. Lord God, the things that 
we have just made up in our mind that said, I'm just going to deal with that for the rest of my life. I pray that today those chains would be broken, that today would be a day of freedom. Lord God, we know, Lord God, your word says in chains, there is life and death in the tongue. And so we speak life to your plans. We speak life to your kingdom. We speak life to your people. And I speak death to every scheme and every plan of the enemy. I speak death to everything that would try to oppose you. And I say that let there be life in this house this morning. Let there be freedom in this house this morning and we thank you heavenly father thank you, Jesus, for a spirit of freedom we declare freedom we declare breakthrough we declare the life of god over this atmosphere we combat every spirit of death that would try to rest upon this place and upon the people of god this morning and we pronounce the life of god the light of god to reign to rule to burst forth burst forth Burst forth from the heavens, oh God, of angel armies. Burst forth from the heavens this morning. Rend the heavens, we pray, oh God, as we release a breakthrough shout, as we release praise unto you, most high God. Let the heavens be stripped open of everything that's trying to be, be, become a barrier between us and between you. that you deserve to be praised. We declare breakthrough in the lives of your people and in this atmosphere and in our region and in our nation. Oh God, we declare that that your life and your light reign supreme. Can someone shout breakthrough, 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 breakthrough the muck, breakthrough the mire, breakthrough the filth, breakthrough the mindset of our culture, Somebody shout! We say, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. We say, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. Come on.
that you are faithful. So I speak at your word. That's the power to change my word. And you're my breakthrough. You're my breakthrough. I will trust you.
feel ready, but I just heard this in my spirit. This is your moment. This is the time. Right here, right now. I know when I feel breakthrough in the atmosphere. So we're going to go back into this. And I want you to do something you've never done before. So you can get something you never thought you could get. I want you to praise like you've never praised. Jump, run, shout. Whatever you have to do to push that break. Grow, grow, are you ready?
imperfect. If you press through, I'll break through. If you press through your flesh, that religion, that compromise, he says I'll break through. Somebody lift up your voice and partner, partner, partner with the spirit of the living God who's willing to break through over this house, over this nation.
Somebody cry out for a break in this morning. Oh, a holy interruption. A holy interruption. A divine interruption. Somebody call in heaven for a breaking in. We call on heaven.
it's your fullness. Oh, it's your fullness. It's your fullness we cry. Oh, it's your fullness we cry. Oh, we cry alone. I've seen, I've heard, and known. I've seen, I've heard, and known. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm known. Open realms of glory. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm known. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm known. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm known. Open, come on. Realms of glory. I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm known. Oh, is that your cry this morning? Oh, we cry, Lord.
those voices. Lift up that breath. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. your spirit that pulls on the realms of another kingdom that is greater than any other kingdom the kingdom of God oh let it be manifest in this place today oh God in every heart in every life in Jesus name we believe the miraculous is breaking in oh God we believe the miraculous is breaking in lift your hands right now and begin to come into agreement today for the power of the miraculous from the realm of God to break into this room, break into your life, break into your families, break into our city and our state, break into our region and our nation. We believe in the miraculous. Somebody pull on a miracle this morning. Pull on a miracle. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are we pull on the realm of the divine. We pull on the realm of the divine. We pull on the realm that contains the highest authority in the universe. Oh, we pull and we decree that this is the day that we will see God break in and break out and break through in the name. Jesus, lift a shout and a roar in this house as the blood of church. This is the day. Come on. Decree it again. This is the day. This is the day. Thank you, Holy Ghost. session right now father in the name of jesus release hope where there has been hopelessness i pray come on somebody pull on it with me today lord release hope today where there has been hopelessness release faith oh god where there has been doubt release peace where there has been fear oh god release it now oh god we pull on your realm we pull on your realm for our god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, think, dream, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. Lift up your hands because God is going to use your declaration today. God is going to use your proclamation today. Oh, My brother came up to me in the, in the middle of worship and he said something like this, that he sees the angelic releasing proclamations through the mouths of God's people to be released all over the nation and the nations of the earth. I concur with that. I agree with that because this is how God works. He is able to do above what we ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. Jesus has done all that he is going to do to make that power available to us. It's up to us to move in it right now. Lift up your hands and open up your mouth. The very thing that the devil is trying to shut in our nation today. Open up your mouth and begin to decree the kingdom realms to manifest in your life, in your family, in your nation. Come on. Come on, decree it. Oh, 
thank you, God. Come on, let, let the Lord speak through you. Let's give the angels something to work with this morning. Let's give the angels the decree of the word of God to work with this morning. Oh, speak over regions, speak over territories. Oh, we say open up and receive the realm of God. Open up and receive the highest realm. Oh, receive the kingdom realm. Thank you, God. Manifest, manifest now, Holy Ghost. Come on. God's using your voice. God's using your breath. God's using your proclamation. Be released over the regions we pray today, oh God. And we say open up for breakthrough. We say open up for breakthrough. Open up for breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, we say open up for breakthrough. Let the King of Glory come in. Let the gates be open. Let the King of Glory enter in. Open up for breakthrough. Open up for healing. Open up for deliverance. Open up for salvation. Open up for the miraculous. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Release your angels now, God. Release your army, oh God. We take our point. We take our point. We take our point. And we contend. We contend that the breakthrough be released in Jesus' name over your life, over your marriage, over your family, over your children, over the prodigal, over the Thank you, God. Hallelujah. How many believe that we are getting ready to see the greatest awakening and revival that has ever hit this people planet? Shout if you believe it in this place today. Oh, this is the day. Come on. This is the day. This is the day. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We answer it. We're going to answer it. We get to see your realm. It's revealed to us by your spirit. Yes, come on, one more time. One more time. open over your life today if you came in discouraged if you came in looking for answers today you're in the right place the only answer for this nation and the nations of the earth is Jesus Christ the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords lift up your voices come on God right now settle down on your people hallelujah this is the day that we enter into the realms of God they are revealed to us by the Spirit of God come on pray in tongues right now if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, but you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come on and receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost today. Somebody watching online, you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Come on, let's have an abadabo shekete. Let's have a Holy Ghost fire altar call right now. <clears throat> you're giving your life to Jesus, but you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You need to pray in tongues. You need to be enveloped and immersed. In the Spirit of God. Church, lift up your hands and let's agree. If you're in this room or you're watching online today, in the name of Jesus, be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Come on, release the heavenly language right now. Release it now. Release it now. Come on, the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon you now. Don't resist. Just receive. Oh, don't analyze. Just receive. Don't debate it. Don't negotiate it. Oh, just receive. Receive. Let Him increase. But I'm gonna shake it. Let him envelop you. Let him surround you. Let him baptize you, immerse you in his realm right now. Come on. Come
Come on, 30 seconds, press. Oh, my soul, I'm a robo, heavy, me, he's a robo, can't get me, stop the robo, okay. Oh, the book, call it a, I'm not really a saute. Oh, they am a cat, I, some of you watching online, maybe you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost before, but it's been a long time since you prayed in tongues for whatever reason. Maybe your church doesn't practice it, or they don't teach it, or they don't welcome it, but I'm saying open up your mouth right now and let the river loose. Let the river loose. I said, let the river, let the well, let it loose. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let the river loose. I uncap the river, the Holy Ghost river in your life. I am a shake. Bobo, robo, he stop, robo, hey. Oh, lift up your voices, church. In this day, in this hour that we live in, we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And we need to use Him. We need to flow in Him and let Him flow through us. One of the ways that you open up God's realms is by speaking in other tongues, is by praying in tongues that unlocks mysteries. All things that we can't understand and think of in this realm, we unlock it by praying in tongues and unlocking it from His realm. Oh God, let it come upon your people this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Son of Mokote. Lift up your voices and say, this is the day that we see miracles in America. This is the day that we see breakthrough in America. Lift up your hands as a sign of agreement and receptivity and say, this is the day that the prodigals come home. Now cry out for 30 seconds right now for the prodigals. I just feel that so strong. Come on, I just feel that so strong. Maybe you don't have a prodigal. And somebody standing beside you may have a prodigal. You may have a son or a daughter or a brother or a sister or an aunt or an uncle or a mom or a dad. Come on, cry out, cry out. This is the day that God breaks open over the prodigals. Get a hold of their minds. Get a hold of their hearts. Shake them. Let your glory chase them down, oh God. Oh, cry out for the prodigal. Cry out. This is the day that the prodigal comes into the kingdom. We will see breakthrough for the prodigal in Jesus' name. This is the day. We lift our faith. Hallelujah. And our prayer of agreement. And we say this is the day. For the river of heaven to rush into this place. The miraculous happen. Miracles. Miracles. Church, we've already seen many miracles these last several weeks. And I just know in my spirit that as the church, not just this one, but the church, the church, pulls on his realm, the miracles are being released over our nation. We've got to have faith. husband has been preaching in Tucson this weekend. Yes. Now, uh, Friday night and Saturday morning, and then this morning he's preaching at a church in Tucson. He did a men's uh, event on Friday and Saturday, and then preaching at their church this morning. Uh, so they started about 30 minutes later than we did. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift our pastor up to you right now that you would speak words, O oh, Father of Revelation, let a revival anointing be imparted to that church in Tucson. 
Oh, God, we pray for Tucson right now. Come on, anybody watching in Tucson, come into agreement with us. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for Tucson. That that city rise to its prophetic destiny in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, let it be opened up in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be opened wide over Tucson, we pray. That you would use this church, that church that he's preaching at, and every other life-giving church in that city. To unite in agreement and break open the heavens for the greatest revival and awakening and reformation that that city has yet to see in the name of Jesus. Let the wells of healing and miracles be, be opened even as in the days of A.A. A. Allen, oh God, that is in that region and in that territory. Let the wells be open once again, oh God. Let it spring up from Tucson. Let it spring up from Tucson. We pray. Let the miracle well. Even of the days of A.A. Allen, oh God, spring up. Even from Tucson now, let the voices arise and decree and release the healing power that needs to go forth to the rest of this nation and this state in Jesus' name. Oh, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Even as Miracle Valley is in Tucson or near Tucson, lift your hands, come on. Even as Miracle Valley. Oh, yeah, my shame. Oh, God, we pull on the power. Let those miracles be released, oh, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we believe, we believe, we believe. We believe. Hallelujah. Before I let you be seated today, hallelujah. Speak Holy Spirit. Well, I just feel that, are the lights all the way up? If they're not, bring them all the way up. These are so bright, I can't tell. There you go. Well, now I can see y'all. Amen. I just, I just want to pray for someone today or someones that have really been dealing with hopelessness. Hopelessness. Now, obviously, in the, in the climate of our nation today, that's an easy thing to fall into. But I want to pray for you today because, I, I, you know, uh, you just feel like you can't fight it off. You can't fight it off. And there's enough agreement in this room today to break that off of your mind and your life. Amen. You don't have to live in a hopeless state. So if that's you, just lift your hand where you are. Don't be embarrassed today. Amen. Just lift your hand. A hopeless, I mean, I mean, it's just like, it's just like literally like, I don't even know, maybe like a chain around your neck or obviously around your mind. Okay. There's some people with their hands raised at uh, various places across here. All right. Stretch your hands out to them right now and let's break this off of their life, off of their mind. Come on. Whatever it is, whatever it is in the name of Jesus, we break a spirit of hopelessness off of your life, your mind. Come on. Come on. God is working. Tears are flowing. Come on. Oh, we break that spirit of hopelessness off of your heart and your mind. Oh, we break the lies of the enemy. We break the deception and the deceit of the enemy. And we release the power of the Holy Spirit. We release the truth of God's word. Hallelujah. That says, if God is for you, then who can be against you? Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Oh, hallelujah. If God is for you.
you, then who can be against you? Oh, in the name of Jesus, I release over you today that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus and that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So I break a spirit of hopelessness off of your life and I release now the faith, the faith of Jesus Christ in a Makote that comes from the Word of God into your heart and your life right now. Hey, Makote, every lying spirit, I break it in Jesus' name. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free in Jesus' name. I am God's going to work it out. I said, God's going to work it out. Our God works all things together for our good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, put your hands together and thank the Lord for hope today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, we honor you today. Jesus Christ, amen and amen. If you love him, let him know one more time. Come on, before you're seated today. Come on, lift a shout. Come on, lift a shout. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. God is good. Wave at somebody as you're being seated today. Come on, tell them you love them. Tell them you appreciate them being here. Amen. God is so awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome absolutely all of you here today. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Hallelujah. All of those who are watching online, thank you for being here today, especially those who are watching from other parts of the United States. We thank you for tuning in. Put your hands together for all those watching from other states today, those watching. <clears throat> Amen. Come on, let them know. Hallelujah. Let them know we thank them for tuning in for the impartation today hallelujah well a few announcements do we have video announcements all right cool uh, hallelujah i'm just gonna act like i know what i'm doing up here go ahead here we go good morning and welcome to fresh start church whether you're here with us in person or watching online welcome we have a lot going on so check out these announcements Freedom Encounter is a day of worship and encounter with the Holy Spirit. It's a powerful time as God breaks the ties of sin and compromise in our lives and we step into an abundant life in Christ. If you are interested in attending, contact the church office to sign up and we will see you on Saturday, August 29th at 9 a.m. Are you new to Fresh Start Church and want to know what's next? Join us for our Next Step Dinner Tuesday, August 18th at 6.30 p.m. You will get to hear more about the history and the vision of Fresh Start Church, as well as meet our pastoral staff. You can contact the church office to sign up. Hey sisters, join us on August 15th for our sisters breakfast. It's going to be a great time of fellowship and encountering God. This event is for ages 12 and up, and there is a small registration fee to help cover the cost of the food of $5 or $10 at the door. You can register via text to give by using the keyword sisters. We have a special guest on Sunday, August 2nd. Jeremiah Johnson will be with us, ministering and bringing the word. You don't want to miss it. Revival Weekend is on August 7th through the 9th with guest speakers Josh Carter and Isaiah Saldivar. Join us as we continue to dig wells of revival for our city, state, region, and nations of the world. All right, come on. Are you excited? Yes. Hallelujah. So yes, Jeremiah will be uh, back with us next Sunday. And then the following weekend is uh, full revival weekend. Amen. So let's be in fasting and prayer about that here pretty soon. Not sure if it's out there today or not, but we're going to have our sign-up sheet. Our prayer center is open uh, now for those who received the code last week. Uh, we'll be giving that out again here in a few weeks. We're, we're, we're doing this a little differently than we did the last time, all right? So you just kind of have to work with us on this, trying to use a little bit of wisdom. Amen. Here. and uh, But fast and pray with us. Uh, for next weekend, uh, for Jeremiah being here with us, but also, of course, for Revival Weekend. So excited what God is doing. So excited. Are you excited what God is doing, amen, with the spirit of revival? Hallelujah. So it's offering time now, yes? Amen. 
Hallelujah. So either you've already given and you've given and you have already gotten excited, or let's try it again. It's offering time right now. Yeah. It is seriously um, a great privilege to give and sow into the kingdom of God. Um, we appreciate everyone's faithfulness uh, here, especially during this time in our, in our nation where things are uncertain. We appreciate your faithfulness. Thank you so much. Uh, for continuing to give your tithes and your offerings, your special offerings in all different areas and places. Missions has not gone uh, lacking. Amen. Here through Fresh Start, we continue to give to missionaries all over the world as well as here in the United States, evangelist uh, ministries. We continue to do that. And then, of course, uh, uh, into revival. Revival continues to go on. Amen. And. Um, as well as uh, just our regular expenses here at Fresh Start Church. So we thank you for being faithful to that. We really, really are thankful for you and all those who maybe give from other places. If you're watching today, you need to give your tithes to your church, right? Don't send your tithes to Fresh Start. Send your tithes to your church. But if you want to give in offerings, then there's a list there uh, on the screen. Or if you want to sow into revival, uh, you can do that online and it gives the information there. For obvious reasons, we're not passing the bucket right now. But if you've got... Uh, Cash, somebody shout cash. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, cash will stay in America. And checks, then you can just hold on to those, and the ushers will be at the doors there. There'll be a bucket, just drop it into there, and uh, they'll take care of that, and we'll get it all uh, into the right place. Amen. But I do want to say this uh, before we move forward today. And, or before I pray over your offerings and then we're going to get into the word is um, September 30th through October the 4th we will be having our first uh, revival conference here at Fresh Start it's called Doorkeepers of Revival Conference we have what we feel is already uh, an amazing for a first conference that we've ever done like this um, in 23 years of being here an amazing group of people from all over the nation, uh, hungry believers as well as pastors and leaders that uh, have already paid their registration fee, maybe bought their plane tickets already, and are going to be coming in here for an impartation of how to keep the door open to revival in their city and in their region. And we want you to begin. I know many of you have already been praying. We have a special prayer team that has just been formulated to pray over this conference that's been going since about the beginning of the year or so. But we want you to begin to really help us zero in and focus on prayer. We're going to be calling a 40-day fast. Don't freak out, all right? Uh, we're going to be calling a 40-day fast beginning sometime next month leading right up to the conference. We're telling you more about that. That will just uh, um, get us better prepared, amen, uh, for the ministry time. But obviously we have a lot of great voices that are coming in uh, to help release that revival spirit. But I'm going to tell you, Fresh Start, the people are coming for the atmosphere. Come on. They're coming for the atmosphere. They're coming for the impartation of the word, but they're coming for the atmosphere. And uh, we are the ones together that help create that. Amen. And uh, I, I say this uh, um, carefully today. Well, God has blessed us uh, here over these last five years. Uh, next month, we will finish up five years of revival and start into six years of sustained revival here at Fresh Start. God has blessed us. And he's taught us several things about how to keep the door open to revival in a city and in a region. And he's also taught us how to keep the fire burning, amen, on the altar of our heart and, 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 in, and in every corporate setting. And we just want to bless other uh, believers and pastors and leaders with just the things that God has taught us. And so this will be a very, 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 very uh, crucial moment, uh, not only in the life of this church, but in the lives of other believers. And that we're just going to prepare in prayer, amen, and know that God is going to lead us and powerful things are going to be done, amen, that weekend. We're starting it on a Wednesday night, which is September 30th. No guest speaker that night because it's going to be Gap that night. Come on. We're doing it on purpose. We're doing it on purpose because we want people, if they can get here, to be in the gap atmosphere, the worship and intercession atmosphere, because that really is the most important meeting of the week around here, is our worship and our intercession. And so we want them to be able to feel and sense 
what it is that propels, that not only brings revival, but makes revival stay. Amen. And then it'll go throughout the weekend with different kinds of sessions during the day and we'll be telling, and the evening, and we'll be telling you more about that as time goes on. So be praying with us about that. Amen. Lift up your hands. I'm going to pray over you as you have already given or will give your offerings today. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost before we go into the Word? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I bless your people today. Lord, I thank you for their faithfulness in giving into your kingdom, in sowing into every part, Lord God, into missions, Lord God, into benevolence, Lord God, into all the areas that we touch, Lord God. Father, into revival, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity to give into your kingdom. And God, we just thank you now, Lord, that your faithfulness, hallelujah, is upon every heart, every life, oh Lord. And the doors of uh, the windows of heaven are open over their finances and over their life. And we believe and agree in Jesus' mighty name that the sound of revival will reverberate across this nation as never before in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody that agrees, say amen. Amen. We'll put your hands together one more time before we go into the Word today. Let's let the worship team know how much we appreciate them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be speaking to you today, yes, along the subject of breakthrough. Somebody shout breakthrough. Come on, a little bit louder. Breakthrough. And the actual title to my sermon today, my message is called Breaking Through Philistia. Breaking through Philistia. Breaking through Philistia. Um, you know, breakthrough is a, is a word that, that we use a lot and frequently. And sometimes, unfortunately, we lose the value of a word when it's overused. Come on. Until we need it. Amen. Until we need breakthrough. Yes. And then the understanding comes and the value returns to us. Amen. Such as in the days that we are living in. In our city, our state, and our nation, and even the nations of the earth, how many know that America needs a divine breakthrough today? How many know that Arizona needs a divine breakthrough today? How many know that we need a fresh understanding of the word breakthrough and the meaning of breakthrough today? We believe in this place, through the power of intercession, which I will be talking about again in another uh, way today, that God brings breakthrough through our prayers. Amen? Amen. Breakthrough is defined in several ways, but some of which is the overcoming of confinement. How many know we need that today? The overcoming of confinement, the overcoming of a restriction, the overcoming of obstruction, breakthrough, the overcoming of confinement. Can I get a witness? The overcoming of an obstruction or restriction. This is breakthrough. Breakthrough is advancing beyond an enemy's frontline defense. Yes, breakthrough. Advancing beyond, shout beyond shout beyond. This is breakthrough. It's advancing beyond. This is why we can't stand still. Amen. Uh, Now I know the Bible says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, but that standing still is not inactivity. Come on. But breakthrough is advancing beyond an enemy's front line of defense. That's why we can't be idle. That's why we can't have it in neutral. That's why why we can't stand down. Come on, y'all. It's because breakthrough is advancing beyond the enemy's front line of defense. Yes. A breakthrough Breakthrough is a sudden advance. It's a, it's a sudden, it's a, a sudden advance that removes a barrier uh, uh, to progress. This obstruction, this confinement, uh, and this restriction. I don't know about you, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm angry at the enemy. Come on, I'm angry at people because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But I'm angry at the enemy, at the restriction and the confinement and the obstructions that he is putting in the way of the people of God. And even of, the, uh, of those who don't know the Lord in our nation today, but I I got something to uh, shout from the rooftop today is that the body of Christ is still in this earth. The body of Christ is still in this nation and we have a voice. I said we have a voice. I said we have a voice and we have breath and we have the declaration of the word of God and with that we can advance beyond the enemy's frontline defense and make an advance that removes the restriction and the barrier that has been placed there by the enemy. Yes, somebody shall break through. Our God is a breakthrough God. <clears throat> do you believe it? I know you do. Our God is a breakthrough God. Just tell your neighbor, our God is a breakthrough God. 
I'm having you do that on purpose because when we speak things out, come on, it creates an energy. Hey, robo shake. When we speak things out, it could not not a natural energy, but a supernatural energy. Because where two or three, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but where two or three ag- uh, agree together, come on, God comes down in the midst of that. So with that understanding, tell your neighbor again, your God, my God, is a breakthrough God. May we not trivialize that today. May we not minimize that today. Because our nation needs a divine God breakthrough. Jehovah God breakthrough in this hour. Yes, we need a breakthrough against COVID. And I say it's coming in the name of Jesus. Yes, we need a divine breakthrough against the chaos and the animosity and the anger in our nation today. And I say that it is coming. But ultimately, we need a breakthrough for revival in this nation and awakening and I need to remind us today that we must not let anything talk us out of breakthrough don't let any news report don't let any person don't let any negativity don't look come on that's why I dealt with hopelessness don't let anything talk us out of breakthrough but stay in hope stay in expectation like we were just singing about confessing that this is the day that we're going to see the divine breaking into this nation the devil would want to get us caught up in hopelessness because when we're in hopelessness it means that we have accepted the situation and then there is a lack of acceptance for a breakthrough but I came to say today that from Genesis to Revelation when God's people needed breakthrough and somebody cried out to him they pulled on the power of the breaker and they pulled the breaker capital B Jesus Christ the Messiah come on they pulled on the power. And our Bible says in 2 Corinthians, it's not going to be on the screen, but it says God always leads us in triumph. A couple of months ago in May, I preached a message called Forerunners of Faith. And with that, at the beginning of that message, I made this statement. And it really wasn't like uh, the, the entire message that fit with it, but uh, it definitely is going to be the launching uh, point from this message today. And I said this. I said, in the days ahead, hallelujah, The body of Christ will need to form an impenetrable line of intercessory offense. The body of Christ in the days ahead, moving into the days ahead. Hallelujah. The body of Christ will need to form an impenetrable line of intercessory offense with and for one another. As the days ahead is going to require great faith, not a theory of faith, not a song about faith, even though that's fine but a great faith, a living faith, and an active faith. Everybody shout a living faith, an active faith. And I'll add today for the purpose of this message, that faith is best found in the power of agreement. Come on, the power of agreement. In the body of Christ, we must begin as never before. And I know it's there in measure, but God is strengthening the intercessors. God is strengthening the intercessory lines, if I can say it like that, throughout our nation today. God is connecting. God is, 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 is molding hearts. God is bringing a unity. Come on. God is bringing a one heart and a one mind across this nation in the body of Christ. And I know we have our differences in opinion on this and on that. And maybe that won't ever go away in some measure. But I can guarantee you that we can come together for this one thing. And that is there is a harvest that must be reached. And that there is a devil that is trying to keep us from reaching the harvest. But as we stand up across this nation and connect with a line of intercession in the power of agreement and come with an offer an offensive line of intercession that busts through the defense of the enemy it will literally annihilate and obliterate every obstruction and restriction and isolation and oppression that the devil has tried to put upon this nation it is coming because we're building structures for breakthrough We must continue to build a structure for breakthrough with our faith across this nation. 
We got to put it out there. Come on. Look at your neighbor. Say, put it out there. Put your faith out there. Give God something to work with. And let's expect breakthrough. Come on. I said, let's expect breakthrough. Let's expect breakthrough. I'm not just trying to hype us today. I, I'm under great, great uh, weight this morning as I stand here. And I say, let's expect breakthrough against COVID in this nation. Let's expect breakthrough against the, uh, the chaos and the anger and the disunity in this nation. Let's expect it. Let's pull on the breakthrough and the breakthrough round today. We've got to give God our faith. And I was reminded in Mark chapter 2, the scripture's not on the screen, but I was, uh, I was reminded, I think it was in our weekly Bible reading, of the crippled man that needed healing, and Jesus was preaching, and the house was full. Well, come on, somebody. How many know it's awesome when Jesus comes into the house, the house is full, yes? Hallelujah. And they couldn't give the crippled man to Jesus so this offensive line, if I can use that terminology, of intercessors, they made a way. And the, and, the, and the Passion Translation said, when they had broken through the roof, they took this man. Can you imagine all that it took to get this man, couldn't walk, up to the roof, and then they had to break through. Church, we're going to have to break through for him to break in, to break through. We got to build a structure. And it said when they had broken through, that they laid the crippled man at Jesus' feet, and Jesus healed him, and he, hallelujah, he rose up and he walked. And Jesus, the Bible says that when Jesus saw the extent of their faith, I began to ask myself, what is the extent of my faith today? You ask yourself, what is the extent? Body of Christ, let's ask, what is the extent of our faith? Because the Bible says when Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he reached out and he healed him. Now, I'm going to say something. i got a lot to say, as always, today. But let me say this up front. Because I'm mainly going to be talking about uh, offensive praying and intercession today. But I, and this, this will be a, 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 a topic for another message. I do not want to, to, to underestimate or, or cause you to think that it is not important to pray protective prayers and defensive prayers. Come on. Prayers of protection and prayers of defense. I pray every day, this morning, early, getting up, praying prayers. I don't have time to go through them this morning. Surrounding me, surrounding my family, surrounding you, surrounding your family, surrounding our revival family, surrounding this church, surrounding, come on everybody, defensive prayers. It's very, very important. But I want to talk mainly today about this intercessory offensive line that is impenetrable against the works of darkness, specifically specifically against one controlling spirit that I'll get to in just a moment. But an offensive position is one of aggression and invasion and attack and, yes, even assault. And breakthrough is actually a military term that is offensive thrust that, as I've already said, goes past the defensive line of the enemy or the warfare of the enemy. You know, the Bible has a lot to say about this type of, of prayer and the agreement of prayer such as I'm talking about. And a most powerful passage of scripture on a line of interse intercessory offense is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 8. And I want to read it from the Passion Translation. Listen to the power of this. This is, of course, the Apostle Paul. And he says, brothers and sisters, you need to know about the severe trials. Everybody say severe trials that we experienced while we were in Western Turkey. All of the hardships that we passed through, they crushed us beyond our ability to endure. Uh -huh. And we were so completely overwhelmed that we were about to give up entirely. It felt like we had a death sentence written on our hearts, and we still feel it to this day. It's the Apostle Paul. It has taught us, he said, to lose all faith in ourselves and to place all of our trust in the God who raises the dead. <laughs> he has rescued us, look, from terrifying encounters with death. And now we fasten our hopes on him to continue to deliver us from death yet again. Watch, it goes right into verse 11. As you labor together with us through prayer. 
because there are many interceding for us, our deliverance will cause even more people to give thanks to God. There are many interceding. I said there are many interceding. What and, 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 the, and it ends like this. This verse ends like this. What a gracious gift of mercy surrounds us because of your prayers. Did you get that? I say this with great conviction today. A strong community in fellowship, in prayer, in prayer partnership, and in accountability will become more and more important in the last days. A strong community with believers. I say this with great conviction today. There can be no lone rangers. There can be none of those who flit off by themselves and decide I can make it. I'm telling you in the days of head, there must be a strong fellowship, a strong prayer connection, and a strong community of accountability. It will be more and more important as we go into the last days. The Bible says that when we touch and agree on anything, that it will be done by our Father in heaven. Ah, the word touch. Touching or the word touch there in the Greek means seeing it through. Or maybe we could say seeing breakthrough today. That scripture comes from Matthew chapter 18 verse 19. And that word agree there when it says touch and agree. That word agree literally is like a symphony. And a symphony produces a sound. A symphony produces a beautiful sound. When you and I pray for one another and we come in into a line of intercessory offense. It produces a symphony. It produces a sound that releases, hallelujah, the heavens and releases the breakthrough of heaven. The Bible says, this is why, that in the end times and in the last days, it's going to be very important for you to be connected with a vital community. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let deceptive voices voices lie to you. You need a strong church. You need a strong community. You need those that you can link arms with and you can say, I need your prayer. You need my prayer. I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for me. You need me to pray for you. We need a strong community. And as the devil ramps up and as the antichrist ramps up, we form in a strong community all over this nation lines of intercessory offense and nothing can penetrate that line of intercession. Shout if you believe it in this room. The Bible says that two are better than one. You can chase multiple more demons with others. It was God's design that man not be alone. Where two or three are gathered, God himself comes down into the midst of them. What a powerful sound together. A symphony of agreement releases miracles. You and I have made a symphony today. Come on. You never thought you'd be a part of a symphony. You're part of a symphony. You say, I don't sing well. You sound good to God today. I don't, I don't think I pray well. You sound good to God today. The demons tremble when you open up your voice and you release your sound. It creates a symphony. It creates a symphony that opens up breakthrough. You got to know this is why the devil is trying to shut our mouths today. Because our agreement unlocks heaven. The Bible states that the anointing and the blessing rest on agreement. Yes. The power of agreement. With that in mind, I will say very quickly and move on that I see even greater the power of the truth. In the word of God uh, that says, as you see the day of the Lord approaching, forsake not the assembling or the agreeing of yourselves together. You see, assembling together, my friends, is not just for the purpose of getting in the building, but it's purpose of getting in agreement. The corporate prayer of, of the Acts church produced the corporate power that the Acts church walked in. 
and the very process of assembling something, let's just say a bicycle or whatever you're trying to put together, those parts must agree with one another. Come on. Every part must agree with one another. They must come into agreement with one another to create the intended outcome. Our intended outcome as we come together in agreement is always breakthrough. Breakthrough in your family, breakthrough in your church, breakthrough in the city, breakthrough in this nation and the nations of the earth. And agreement creates an atmosphere that releases breakthrough. Come on. We come together in heart. We come together in mind. We come together in proximity like we are in this room today. And we form a line of intercessory offense. And it brings in the vital element of agreement that unlocks heaven. Agreement unlocks breakthrough. Hallelujah. It releases a multiplied symphonic sound that, 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 that releases an anointing and authority that is compounded. I mean, I mean, you feel it in this room today. Come on. Your anointing and my anointing and this anointing and that anointing and all over this building today. It releases it and it pulls on the supernatural breakthrough realm of God. Hallelujah. Agreement brings breakthrough. It opens a channel for God's power to flow through unobstructed. Agreement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Agreement by the church in the book of Acts broke Peter out of prison. Come on. And back before that in the book of Acts, agreement brought the breaking in of the power of the Holy Ghost on the, on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. The biblical prayer of agreement has guaranteed results and an unstoppable force. And Satan understands the power of agreement. But I ask, does the church understand the power of agreement today? Heaven itself operates from the principle of agreement. First John chapter 5. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. You see, agreement in heaven, it calls an atmosphere of power that brought a breakthrough into the earth. What was the breakthrough? The breakthrough, the result, was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Heaven agreed together Father, Son, Holy Spirit and Jesus broke into the earth making a way in the heavenlies he broke open a way in the heavenlies so that you and I could get to the Father the Bible says when he cried it is finished there was a tangible sign that a breakthrough had happened because in the temple in the temple the veil was rent from top to bottom when Jesus cried it is finished there was a tangible sign that there was a breakthrough what did Jesus do he broke open the way to the father every obstruction every confinement every restriction every barrier that that veil represented Jesus broke it open because there were agreement in heaven did you get that There is something fighting uh, for the destiny. Can I get the clock up on the, not that it matters, but can I get the clock up on the, the screen there? There is something fighting for the destiny of our nation today. And it is deeper than a virus. And it is deeper than racism. These are symptoms of a deeper agenda to impede the progress and the establishment of the gospel and the kingdom of God through the church. Folks, hear me now. There's a lot of other things swirling around. You know, elections and you got this and that and the other. Yes, probably to all of that. But I'm telling you what the bottom line is, not about anything else. It's about the gospel of the kingdom. It's about our God. And his kingdom being established. We look. We must look beyond these symptoms. We must have eyes to see. Last week I talked to you about perception. We must have eyes to see in the spirit. Not just in the natural. What the Lord needs us to do in this hour. We must look beyond the symptoms to the root. And this is where breakthrough happens. In May of last year, I preached two messages. I preached a lot of messages, but two back-to-back. -back. One called Uncommon Anointing and the next one Undeniable Authority. Through those messages, I revealed through a very vivid dream, which I'm not going to give you today, uh, what, what 
I believe not only uh, over Phoenix, Arizona, went deeply into that in that second message there, but also over our nation. And I know others have spoken to this. There's other voices that have. That's why I'm referring to what the Lord spoke to me last year. I'm going to bring an element of that back today and talk about breaking through Philistia. Because through those two messages and that very, very vivid dream that God gave me last year, the Lord showed me the stronghold of the Philistine spirit, the antagonizing Philistine spirit that is over this nation. We have seen it manifest even greater this year. That doesn't mean we're defeated. It just means that we zero in, come on y'all, greater in intercessory prayer. We see it through the oppression. We see it, this, the, the manifestations through the control and through the confinement that we are seeing in the symptoms of things that are taking place in our nation today. Everybody say symptoms. The symptoms of things that are taking, even the antagonism of the violence and the hatred and the, and the, and the, and the uh, outlash against authority in the, the swirl going around. There's a story in the Bible that shows us an army, a line of intercessory offense that broke through, if I can say it like this now, that Philistine spirit. In that day, it was the natural army that was, of course, on the earth. They broke through Philistia. They broke through the Philistine camp. And I want to take us quickly to that story and I'll deal with that through the rest of the message today and first chronicles it's also in Samuel but in first chronicles chapter 11 verse 18 and it says this and I'm going to tell you the story in bits and pieces surrounding this so three and this is the mighty men of David that it is referring to here three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines or they broke through Philistia and they drew water from the well of Bethlehem, hallelujah, which was by the gate, and they took it, and they brought it to David. One more time. Three broke through the camp. An intercessory line of offense broke through the camp of the Philistines, and they drew water from the well of Bethlehem, which was by the gate, and they took it, and they brought it to David. I want to use these three mighty men, as well as the vast army that surrounded David in this time as a picture of how God can and is going to use the power of intercessory agreement in this day and this age that we live in. We can't just wish COVID away. We can't just wish antagonism and hatred away. We've got to get on our knees and link arms together and Pull on the realm that is the only realm that can bring breakthrough into our nation today. These three mighty men decided to agree. Everybody say agreement. They decided to decide, excuse me, to agree to break through for the desire of David's heart. I believe that the desire of David's heart represents the desire of every human being. David longed and had a desire to have water from the well of Bethlehem. The context of this scripture is prefaced by the death of King Saul and then now by the installment of King David over all of Israel. I'll get back to that. But David now in this part of the story is in Jerusalem. Watch, you might say he's on lockdown in Jerusalem. Yes, he was in captivity or hiding or in the Bible says in the stronghold in the city of David or in Jerusalem. And in that moment, he began to experience express a longing for the water, if I can say the spirit, the life, the revival, the moving of God from the well of Bethlehem. Bethlehem meaning house of bread. But Bethlehem, watch me, was under the control, under the confinement, under the restriction of the Philistines. So between David, between David's desire, and between the water and the well in Bethlehem was the camp of the Philistines, was Philistia. I'll say it like this. Between the desire of every human heart that beats for 
for the substance of the water and the realm that we sang about this morning from heaven and the church today, the ones that are to draw it out and to break through uh, uh, the line of the enemy, there is a controlling, dominating, bully spirit that is looking the church in the face today and saying, I dare you to come over here. But three mighty men decided that they were going to form a line of intercessory offense and say, you know what? I know these guys think they're bad and all that, but we're going to go because there is a desire of the king. There is a desire of the king. The king has a desire. So we're going to break through the confinement. We're going to break through the lockdown. We're going to break through the obstruction and the restriction to get to Bethlehem, the house of bread. If you'll give me a minute and I'll do this quickly, let me remind you of what a Philistine spirit is characterized by. It is characterized and defined by the methods and the attitudes and the operation of the Philistine people in the Bible. I'll say this right now and maybe repeat it later, but around a hundred years started in Genesis, and now we're all the way here through David. The Philistine people oppressed the people of God. That's a long time. They would have victories, and then they would come back. Have victories, and then come back. But in short, the Philistines were a people group who were continuously antagonistic against God's people, or we could say the church. In the Old Testament, of course, it was the Israelites. This people group, the Philistines, was more than just a nuisance. They were a strategic demonic plant. This is why I say today, we have to look past the symptoms and get to the root of what is happening in our nation. They were there to take out the ultimate purposes of God Almighty through his people. They were ordered by principalities to delay and delude and to demean and destroy God's purpose and God's people. And we see this Philistine race of people manifesting at strategic points in the plan of God for God's people. They never struck randomly, only with intentional purposes to take territory and to subdue nations, to oppress, to control, and to confine, and to restrict Are you with me? This is an ancient spirit that has many entryways into the minds and the hearts of people. It kind of works like this. It's very seductive. Yes, it can be sexual, but it doesn't always have to be that way. It is even though the God that they worship was vitally connected to perverseness. But seduction can be more than sexual, my friends. Come on. It's anything that brings you in and leads you astray, persuading you and enticing you away from God Almighty. See, seduction Seduction captures your mind that I spoke about last week and it captures your heart so it can lead you into deception. And then deception takes your mind and your heart down the path into delusion which is intended to confuse your focus. It's like circles and cycles. I said it's like circles and cycles. If I say what I said last week, if nothing is making sense and nobody can get a right answer, then the works of darkness are operating. A never-ending loop of denial, delay, and restriction. And at this point, delusion misleads the mind, and it begins mocking the truth and frustrates the hopes and the goals of the hearts of people. And then they lose trust in the truth of God's word and of God's principles. And if we're not seeing this happen in our nation now more than ever, I don't know if we are seeing this happen more than ever in our nation... my friends, it is a spirit that is associated with this that causes delusion. That it's like, well, maybe I do need to consider something else. Maybe I do need to consider another God, another path. There's people out there today that will tell you there are many paths to God. First of all, there's only one God, and it is Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, Messiah, Yeshua. And there is only one path to that God, our God, and that is through Jesus Christ. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The only king that wears a crown that is worthy of worship. Shout if you know what I'm talking about today. But when you get up underneath delusion, then you're like, well, there's options out here. There are no options for you, my friend. 
This is what happened to the people of Israel over and over and over. There were other gods that came and crept in. They opened themselves up through disobedience. So then delusion sets in and they begin, it begins to mock the truth, capital T. And then it begins to frustrate them. Why can't I find peace? Why can't I find answer? Why can't I find hope? It's because you have lost your trust in the truth of the word of God. And delusion is setting in saying, consider this over here Philistine spirit and this leads people into idolatry idolatry is not a little statue that you have in your house it can be but in the day and age we live in it's many other things it's anything that you have put in the place of God what consumes your time that's your idol I'll try this side what consumes your time that's your idol in the place of God Huh. that you give more devotion to. How to recognize this spirit? It's a bully spirit. He that has ears to hear, hear what the spirit is saying. It is an antagonistic, intimidating, controlling, bully spirit that operates out of illegal authority. It limits, it restricts, it blocks, it intimidates through fear. Now, for those of you who did not hear the message from last year, you go and listen because basically almost everything in this particular part I took from that message to show you. So this is not just something. The Lord, the Lord was showing us something last year. Come on, Fresh Start. This is not just something that I came up with in this current climate in our culture right now. The Lord spoke this to us. It is a bully spirit intimidating primarily through fear. If you look throughout the Word of God, all the way, as I said, back in Genesis with Jacob, and you move forward on throughout the Bible, of course, uh, Saul and Samson and David that we're reading about now, Goliath. Uh, uh, Goliath was a Philistine, worshipped. Uh, Dagon was his God. Uh, all throughout the Word of God, it stole the presence, the ark of God. It was a, sabota a sabotaging spirit. It, it stopped up wells back in the day uh, 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 in, the, in Genesis. And, and it is definitely a mocking spirit, a taunting spirit, Goliath coming out and taunting uh, the armies of God and taunting David and mocking and it is alive in our nation today I said we got to see past the symptoms and we got to see to the root because this spirit what this spirit is all about went more deeper into it last year but it wants to bring storms into your life it wants to bring crisis into your life it wants to bring crisis into a nation and the reason why or into a person's life and heart is to kill your your vision your spiritual vision and to steal your strength and your dreams it goes after your eyes it goes after your head your mind and ultimately it is after your worship and it is after your authority in the context of this same story that I read about David and the three mighty men in 1 Chronicles 10, verse 10, it says they, meaning the Philistines, they put Saul's armor in the house of their gods and fastened his head, everybody say the head, fastened the head in the house of Dagon. Dagon is the god of the Philistines. Everything I just described to you for the last several moments and more was driven by the characteristics of the demonic worship of this false god. It is significant that we note from this scripture in 1 Chronicles 10 that they put Saul's armor and his head in the house of their false gods and in the house of Dagon because there was many gods that they worshiped but Dagon was like the overarching one false god. Both of those are indicative of what the, of the Philistine spirit is after. Your spiritual authority the armor and the head it speaks of authority the head is where the authority is exercised and then the mockery of cutting off Saul's head now this is something they did in the battle times in, in Old Testament to show their victory etc but they didn't stop there are you with me today I don't want to lose you they didn't stop at just cutting off his head and all right we got Saul the Philistines because of this demonic wicked vile spirit they took his head because he had been king and they 
they put it in the house of Dagon. It was a blatant mockery of the worship of Almighty God saying, now we tag you, we plaster you to the wall of our God, thereby having the head and the armor and placing it on the wall. They stole the authority and they stole the worship. Are you with me today? My friends, we cannot overlook the fact, and I don't watch the news very much at all anymore because for several reasons that I will save my time and not talk about today. But I'm telling you this, that if they are beheading Jesus statues in our nation today, that is intentional and that is demonic. Someone may have just stirred them up and gave them an idea to do this. But I'm telling you, it came from the pit of hell because that head is the head of the church of Jesus Christ in this nation and the nations of the earth. That spirit, I see we got to look past COVID. We got to look past the chaos and we got to speak to the root. It's challenging the very head of authority in this nation. Never seen anything like it. Pastor Kim, just let go of this antagonism thing. Oh, okay. Like Saul's army while Goliath was out there. Spiritual authority releases and drives breakthrough. And this is why I'm pointing us back to the Philistine spirit today. Deluding, mocking is one goal. Capture your heart and your worship to get your authority, your head. But I'll move quickly. There were three mighty men who broke through Philistia. They broke through the Philistine camp to get to the well of Bethlehem, to get to revival. Come on. To get to the water, to get to the spirit, to get to life, to get to hope, to get to breakthrough. At strategic transition moments in the process of time, God will raise up those who carry a breakthrough resolve for the purpose of establishing his authority and his worship in the earth. I'm going to go fast, but don't forget, it's about authority and it's about worship. In this passage of Scripture... We see a very strategic transition moment for the nation of Israel. They were on the brink of finally subduing the Philistines. The people group who had oppressed and dominated, as I said earlier, for a hundred years. God was getting ready to bring breakthrough. This is what I mean. I mean, ultimate dominion and subduing this uh, people group. And we can say this spirit. God was getting ready to bring breakthrough. That's why I said we can never give up. We can never get hopeless. We must continue to create a structure through our faith and through our intercessory prayer that pulls on the breakthrough of heaven. But before the breakthrough, I want to show you this. Before the breakthrough came against the Philistines, there was a gathering of the army in agreement. There was a gathering, if you will, of the line of intercessory offense. If you look in chapter 12 and verse 22, it says, by day and by night, or day by day, men came to David to help him. This is the same story, all right? The three men have already broken through the camp. This is a little bit further on in chapter 12. Uh, Day by day, men came to to David to help him until there was a great army like, everybody say like, it was like the army of God. When I read that, it caught my attention. It was a great army and it was like the army of God. If the Bible says it's like something, especially if it's like the army of God, I think we got to pay attention to this because David had an army, literally a line of intercessory offense that was literally like the angelic host of heaven. It was an incredible statement to be like like the army of God because if you're like the army of God then you are compared to the angelic host of heaven the Bible is comparing David's army the men that had gathered around him to the army of God the army of God is the angels of God what do angels do angels break through come on angels break through angels break through on behalf of God angels break through on behalf of men angels break through and David had an army around him that was like the 
army of God. I'm looking all over this room today from the front row all the way up to the top of this sanctuary. And I say in Jesus name, there is an army that is being forged in this place and in this nation. And it is like the army of God. Break through intercession. God is forging an army. And sometimes God has to take us through some things. To help us learn how to pray. To get through some things. To break through. So there's a whole context of the Apostle Paul there. He said, I felt like I was dying. Still feel like I was dying. There was hard pressures. There was hard trials. There was all kinds of stuff going on. But there was an army that was praying for us. And God's mercy is breaking in because an army is praying for us. So don't be discouraged if you have to go through some things. Because the going through of the thing forges this last day army to be like the army of God. There has to be a resolve. These three men had a resolve. This army had a resolve. If you're going to face the Philistine spirit, you must have a resolve. Standing in the power of agreement. Agreement. Hallelujah. This army that God is forging will be one of humility. There will be no grandstanding in this army. Their disposition will be humility. Their posture will be agreement. Their attitude will be honor. And their motivation will be for the glory of the king and him alone. In other words, they will not be in it for their own party or their own show or their own platform. They will possess a kingdom mindset. I'm talking about the army in the last days. That's going to have an intercessory line of offense that literally, literally breaks through. Come on. On behalf of God's kingdom. They'll be driven by the need to establish. Watch me now. God's honor and God's worship in the earth. Because it's all about honor, authority, and worship. So as I read this story of David and his mighty men. And the relentless opposition of the Philistine army. I see a principle. And I'll wind this up today. That will help us lead. Lead us into the place of breakthrough. Yes, in our nation I believe. In your personal life. In this church. In revival. You see, the agreement of these three mighty men, this is so important, watch this, came at a very strategic moment in the life and the destiny of David. But connected to the destiny of David was the destiny of a nation. Don't underestimate the prayer that you pray. Don't underestimate the time that you put in. Don't underestimate what God might want to do in and through you in the days ahead. You just might be the one. Come on. You just might be the one. I don't know if you'll know it or not, but your prayer might be the prayer. Come on. Your prayer might be the prayer. Your declaration might be the declaration that unlocks it. Your prayer, your declaration, your proclamation might be the one that God uses. Come on. To connect the destiny of a nation to. This moment came after the death of Saul. And watch now. When David was made king over all Israel. Say all Israel. Please listen closely. I do this quickly. In other words, this moment of breakthrough against the Philistines, breaking through Philistia and the army like the army of God, it came after the uniting or the agreement of Israel and Judah. These men were able to break through enemy-held territory by the Philistines to obtain precious water, the spirit, the anointing, the desire of David from the well of Bethlehem after the uniting or the agreement of Israel and Judah. If you don't know the Old Testament and you don't know the story, I'll tell you now, for a brief period of time or for a period of time, After the death of Saul, Israel and Judah were separated. Judah followed David, and Israel followed Saul's son, Ishbanesh, something like that. There was contention. Watch now. I say, the symptoms tell us things, guys. The symptoms talk to us. There was contention. 
there was strife and there was a civil war between Israel and between Judah. Hear the word of the Lord. And the Philistine dominance continued until King David brought into agreement Israel and Judah and finally drove the Philistines from that territory in 980 B.C. Look, I mentioned it earlier and I'm, I'm not here to talk uh, necessarily depth in depth on unity today, but I am talking about agreement. And I understand that we're not always in the body of Christ going to see eye to eye, but I repeat today that we must come together and agree for breakthrough for the United States of America because we need a divine breakthrough. We don't need this platform or that platform or this evangelist or that evangelist and I'm not saying God's not going to use them but what I am saying is we need one voice that's like a symphony that releases from this earth into the realms of heaven that pulls on a divine breakthrough when Israel and Judah come together it defeats the Philistine spirit come on shout so I wind this up today by saying I sense that in our nation right now and in the church in our nation we're at a very strategic transition moment and the swirl that we are experiencing right now is indicative of the Philistine spirit at work to capture the heart to get worship and authority for the purpose of domination I say look at the symptoms but then speak to the root come on the division, the delusion, the seduction, the fear, uh, the, the infirmity, the idolatry. It's directly and openly referring to Philistia. It's not an activist group. It's not a political party. Come on. I'm not saying one or the other can't be used by, by, the, by the enemy. But what I am saying, that's not it. That's not the root. Come on. Come on. That's not the root. It's a demonic spirit that seeks to dominate minds in order to control regions for the purpose of stealing the worship of God and stealing the authority of God's people in the earth. And the kingdom of God is established in the earth by the church through our heavenly worship and our heavenly government or our governmental authority. This is why this spirit is trying to shut it down and to cap it right now because worship and government encircle the throne of God forever and ever and ever and ever. Worship and government has encircled the throne of God. Those two elements has been what Satan has always been after. He's always been after the worship. He's always been after the government and all of the chaos and the natural that we are seeing right now is orchestrated by this spirit whose goal is to get the worship and to get the authority and I say again hallelujah just to make the devil mad that even the very name of this virus is a symptom and indicative of the two elements of worship and authority because a crown represents authority but it also represents the reign of constituents who worship and honor the one who is crowned but there is only one that I will worship and I will exalt and it is Jesus Christ the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords he's after the worship he's after the government from about February or March to just recently and uh, we're in July now yes okay I was seeing the number 624. Now, in case you want to write it down, that's my birthday. Hallelujah. <laughs> For next year. Or you want to give a belated birthday wish. And I began to see this earlier on in the year. Very inordinately. And you all know me well enough now. If you've been coming to Fresh Start long enough or watching or listening. that when I share things like this, I share them... Uh, only after I feel very much a confirmation in the spirit. Because I don't want people to get off on the number thing or on the dream thing or anything like that. Are you with me? But God does use these things <clears throat> to speak to us prophetically. And I begin to see the number 624. Well, I begin to see it on the clock, first of all. How many know you can only see 624 two times a day? So to see that in an ordinate amount of times for an extended period of time, I begin to be a little concerned. Come on, someone. I'm like, wait a minute. That's my birthday, God. Okay. So, no, I, I seriously, I kept it prayer. I didn't tell my husband for a long time. I didn't tell him, you know. And then finally I told him. And we began to pray into it. And I began to study it. I'm going to do this very quickly today, and maybe I'll preach into this more. But it goes with this point that I'm making. This is so huge right now. Because I believe the Lord was showing me that this, this, this intercessory line of offense and this army that is like the army of God 
<clears throat> that is being forged and formed in our nation today. And it will be lines, I see it in the spirit, it will be lines north, south, east, and west, crisscross all across this nation. We may not ever meet each other until we get to heaven, but there will be a line of intercession across this nation to defeat this spirit. Come on. As we see has happened here in the word of God. But 24, the number 24, is associated with heavenly government and worship. Being the multiple of 12, it expresses a higher form of the same, which is governmental perfection. I don't want to go deep into this today, and some of you may or may not heard some of the messages that I preach even back as far as March when this whole stupid virus thing broke out and I started talking about authority and all this kind of stuff. But the Lord spoke to us about antagonism against authority. And then I began seeing this, and I said, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? Obviously, you pray into it for personal, for yourself, and all this. But I believe it's, it's even greater for the larger body of Christ. And so the Lord is forging an army in this nation today of intercession. And yeah, we may have to go through some stuff. Come on and face some things. Maybe for the Lord to wake some of us up. Come on, you guys. Maybe for the Lord to shake some, some structures and some systems and some things that need to be annihilated so that he can get our attention. I don't know at all. But I can say this, that he's wanting to move us in to a realm of heavenly government, authority, and worship in this earthly realm before we transition to the heavenly realm so that we can operate against these things that are coming against not only our nation, but the nations of the earth. This 624, the 24, heavenly government and heavenly worship. But then the number 624, just 624, is a biblical number, look you guys, for life and for miracle. Are you with me in the room today? for life and for miracle. It also means threshold. It also means what is gathered or what is in agreement. And get this, it also means gate keepers. Somebody needs to get a revelation. As we come into the power of agreement, we release the heavenly government and the heavenly worship. And what happens is when we come together and we unify, we literally unlock the authority and we unlock the government of heaven that comes against gives us the power to penetrate the lines of defense of the enemy thereby we wreak havoc on the camp of the enemy and we take the spoils come on I'll close this up by saying this I know that's the third time I said that but it keeps y'all hopeful these two nations of Israel and Judah just to further solidify, Israel standing for heavenly worship. Israel is wrestling with God. Intimacy with God. Genesis chapter 32. Judah, I know Judah means praise, but Judah in Genesis chapter 49 is also heavenly government, the scepter of authority. Are you getting what I'm saying today? God is speaking to us. God is showing us it's time. It's time to come together in agreement so that we can create a breakthrough resolve and create a breakthrough anointing that brings the atmosphere of heaven. These three mighty men dared to penetrate Philistia to get to Bethlehem to extract the precious water to satisfy the desire of David that could not be found in any other territories. Fresh start. There are nations. There are territories. There are states and people that are watching right now that are desiring from a spiritual well. They're desiring revival. They're desiring more of God. And God is not only gathering an army in this place, but God is gathering an army in the nation that is like the army of heaven that comes into agreement with the order of heaven. What is the order of heaven? It's heavenly worship and it's heavenly government in order to break through Philistia. Church in America today, may we not sleep. May we not be silent in this crucial threshold whole moment but may we arise so that Philistia does not dominate but that the order of heaven can come into this realm this is what America needs how does this happen three mighty men have to break through no gender there three mighty people have to break through an army of God an army like the army of God have to break through Philistia first Chronicles 14 so they came up this is closing the story up here they came to Baal Perizim, and David defeated who? The Philistines. Well, come on, that's the, that's the high part of the story there. And David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand like the breakthrough of waters. 
Therefore, he named the place Baal Perzim, the master or the Lord of the breakthrough. You see, as you and I move in breakthrough resolve, by our hand, it releases the Lord of the breakthrough. And he breaks through, not just like, eh, even though he could, but he breaks through with the breakthrough of waters. You see, water, as it moves, it carries powerful energy. This is giving us a picture here. The Bible says, like the breakthrough of waters. It's giving us a, a mental, earthly, human picture to know how powerful our God is. This is why I'm telling us today, get our eyes off of the natural circumstances. Get our eyes off of the symptoms. Get our eyes off of what is being replayed and replayed and replayed and replayed. And get your eyes on a God who is able to break through like a mighty water force. Come on. This is what we need today. Stand on your feet all over this building and don't leave because I got one more scripture to give you. Worship authority. Watch now. Look. This is important. If you go to chapter 14, they retaliated. I'm going to drop the mic just a minute. Fresh start. They retaliated. That spirit retaliated. That army retaliated. They came back against God's people again. Even after the first defeat that I just read to you, where he said, This is Lord of the breakthrough. They came back again. And David went to God and he said, God, do I go after him again? We must always be going to God for a strategy. And God said, go for it. And he said, it shall be, God said, when you hear the sound of marching in the top of the mulberry trees or the balsam trees, then you shall go out to battle. For God will have gone out before you broke through to strike the army of the Philistine. This was a backlash after a great victory. And David says, God, give me another strategy. Give me another strategy. This is God. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to give up. I just need to know your mind and your heart. God says, David, watch me work. Because like I'm going to send my sound in the top of trees. You should never be surprised where you hear the sound of God right before breakthrough comes. And if you study that out, it's, some have said that it seems like, sounded like to the Philistines, it sounded like myriad of horse hooves coming after them an army of horses coming after them marching and advancing what started the release of that heavenly sound it all started with a line of intercessory offense three men who broke through a united army coming together releasing the government of heaven the worship of heaven the sound of heaven and it was released because there was a group of people who didn't run from backlash. But they did what it, whatever it took to get the next strategy. The breakthrough came like water, the Bible said. The sound of heaven. I say this to us today. Because as we, sermons like I've preached today, especially for me, is not unusual around here aggression and warfare but God has a mandate on this house fresh start there are some things that I'm not going to release to you today that maybe we'll see how things pan out release to you in the future the near future of how God is using the influence of the intercession of this house 
And for those of you watching online today, just bear with me just a moment. I don't say this in an arrogant way at all because it is a war. We understand it is a real devil. It is a real ranks of darkness. But what I have tried to do today is paint the picture for us that as we continue in our resolve, as we continue to press forward, breakthrough will come. Breakthrough will come. And I want you to be encouraged today because within your sound, within the symphony of the intercession of this house and across the body of Christ, there is literally the strategies of heaven being unlocked and released into this nation. It's just why I say again, and I'm sorry if this is annoying. Actually, I'm not sorry, but if this is annoying you, I'm just be careful what you're listening to and what you're watching to. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord of the breakthrough today. Lift up your hands all over this building. Open up your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Because God is forging an army. God is forging an army. An offensive line of intercession in this house and across this nation. And even as David was held in the stronghold, the Lord would say, even as David was held in the lockdown, the Lord would say, and the Philistine army looked and thought that they were not mobilized and that they were not able to, to organize. The Lord would say, I am organizing and mobilizing my intercessory army as a line that stretches north, south, and east, and west, crisscrossing across this nation. And the enemy will not know what hit him. This spirit will not know what hit it. Because as my body becomes together, Judah and Israel, come together in agreement and they open up their mouths and they open up their intercession and their cry there will literally be released from my realm the sound of many waters the sound of many waters it's the sound of the voice of our God and it's the sound of the worship that is around the throne it is the order of heaven lift up a shout and a cry Father, in the name of Jesus, in this place, lift your hands right now. I'm just saying that as a point of agreement and receptivity today. My God in heaven, let the sound of heaven be released through this place, oh God. Let the order of heaven be established through our intercession, I pray. Come on, can you pray in the Holy Ghost? I say to us, church across this nation today, this is not a time to stand down. This is a time to rise up. A neutralized church creates an energized devil. Come on. A neutralized church creates an energized devil. How are we going to handle this moment? I say how we're going to handle this moment. We're going to form that line of intercessory offense. As the Apostle Paul said, because you have prayed for me, I have walked in deliverance. Because we are an army that is praying. It's going to break COVID off of this state and off of this nation. In the name of Jesus, the reports that are being propagated in our nation today are trying to confuse and are trying to... Uh, 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 depress and oppress the voice and the mind of the church the propagation even I say of lies that is swirling around in our, in our nation today from this to that this subject to that subject is trying to steal the intercession of the church but I came to break off the facade and I came to break off the lie of this Philistine spirit and say it is just a mockery and it's trying to get you to stop trusting in the 
truth of God's word. But when we say no, I will be a mighty person. I will be an army like the army of God that brings breakthrough on behalf of my nation. Somebody has to cry out for breakthrough for this nation. Shout breakthrough. worship and it's after authority but as we lift our worship to our God as we lift our authority in prayer I'm saying look at the symptoms because those two things are trying to be shut down in our nation today look at the symptoms speak to the root if you finish that story there or that part of the story in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, you see this Philistine army, these people, has stolen the ark of God. And David said, I got to get the ark back. I've got to get the presence back to Jerusalem. 1 Chronicles 16, the ark of God, the presence of God, was placed back in its rightful place in Jerusalem. First Chronicles 18, it says, David subdued the Philistine people. He brought them under his dominion. hundred years. All because three mighty men and an army like the army of God didn't stand down. But they broke through Philistia. Father, anoint your people. Anoint us, I pray. Fresh start, I'm telling you, God is mightily using your intercession. God is mightily using you. Don't be discouraged today. Don't be discouraged. Don't be without hope. God is on your side. Lift your hands all over this building and I'm going to let you go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray specifically, Lord God, for the people in this room today, God. I pray that they be hidden in you. I pray, oh God, they be covered, Jesus, in your precious blood. Lord, I pray that you would use them. Use them like those three mighty men. As they go to their prayer closets, as they take a stand, as they open up their mouths and begin to proclaim, use them, oh God, to penetrate Philistia, to break through on behalf of your kingdom. And Father, I thank you right now that you are forging an intercessory line across this nation, oh God. I just feel like that I'm prophesying right now. I don't know what all is going to go into that in the future, but I know that something has been opened up here, and I won't speak to it this morning because I want to be accurate, but God is going to begin to form intercessory. I know I've said it a lot. He's going to begin to form intercessory lines all across this nation. And we're going to see things shift and turn in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and thank the God of breakthrough today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Yes. Heavenly government. Heavenly worship. If you're here today and you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, everyone pray this prayer as loud as you can with me. You've never given your life to Jesus, or maybe it's been a long time since you've walked uh, with Jesus. You need to rededicate your life. Say this with us. Say, Jesus, louder than that. Jesus, I cry out to you today. I need you in my life. Take control of my life. I give you all that I am. Fill me today with your precious Holy Spirit. I believe that you died for my sins and you forgive me of all my sins. So I confess you as Savior, Lord, and Master of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. God bless you. If you prayed that prayer today, someone will meet you right over here by these crosses and they will pray with you some more and give you some information. God bless you. We'll see you back here on Wednesday night for Gap. Love you. Thank you for joining our Sunday morning worship experience. To watch today's service again, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. For updates on all things Fresh Start Church, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you've been impacted by today's service and wish to partner with us, you can give by texting 623-299-2707. Thanks for joining our live stream. We'll see you next time.